Welcome, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be uh, uh, getting a chance to talk to uh, Martin Silva, and he's going to talk about mind, mouth, and uh, the fitness of the human body. and And I'm going to let I'm going to let Martin jump in and tell us a little bit about himself and how he got into this crazy podcast world. First of all, Rob, it's an absolute honor to be on. Love the stuff you're putting out there, and yeah, it's an absolute it's an absolute privilege to be here. So, yeah, in terms of the podcasting world, cut a long story short, I'm actually yeah. from Wales in the UK. I've got a bit of a weird accent now, Rob. You know, I'm not sure. What, what do you think? Do you think it's a... Do you think well, it's a well, I know you're in Australia, so, you know, I was thinking, you know, obviously that must be where you're from, but uh, the beauty of the world is is our languages are transportable, aren't they? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm from Wales in the UK. Yeah. So the funny thing is I live in New South Wales now, which is a state in Australia. I live in Sydney. But I'm actually from the original South Wales. I'm from South Wales, the original one. Allegedly, Captain James Cook called it New South Wales because it reminded him of Wales, where I'm actually from back in the UK, which is like 15,000 miles away. So I moved to Australia six and a half years ago. But it's the usual thing, Robin, for the audience, where British people come here, they love the lifestyle so much, and they don't go back. So I only came here for a year on a working holiday visa. I was like 29 at the time. Six and a half years later, I'm a resident, just about to get my uh, citizenship soon as well. So I get like the Australian passport. And yeah, I was a uh, personal trainer at the time and face-to-face -face personal trainer. I, I did that for around about 12, 13 years. And then it was actually when all the COVID happened. The, the strange thing is I was kind of making the transition to online coaching, uh, transformation coaching, prior to COVID and then obviously COVID happened. And obviously, you know, that was kind of a, a bigger opportunity, right? To kind of reach more people because there's more people kind of, you yeah. know, on their phone or whatever. Um, and yeah, so uh, with the podcast and stuff, I started that in 2018, a year after coming to Sydney. I started listening to podcasts back in like 2014 when no one even, not many people knew what a podcast was back then. And I thought, wow, really like this. And then, you know, I met some contacts here and some good people in Sydney. And just started recording and never looked back, really. Nice, nice. And tell us a little bit about Optimize Your Body. What was the focus and the intention of that particular line of work? Yeah, and Optimize Your Body. I thought of that name because I was thinking of all these kind of like, you know, fancy names and stuff like that. And I was like, what do you live? What lifestyle do you live? And what message do you want to get out there? And I was like, Optimize Your Body, right? Because that is what I'm all about is trying to optimize things when it comes to training, lifestyle, nutrition, and just really helping people become the best version of themselves, you know? So, yeah, that was a concept that I came up with, just optimize your body, just a, a name, essentially. And then, yeah, because I've done a lot of bodybuilding comps as well in the past. I used to be a bodybuilder back home in the UK, and I got to a point where you know, aesthetically, I was in incredible shape. And I'm in the shape of my life now, to be honest, but, you know, I got shredded, as they say, right? Or, you know, just, just ripped to pieces for bodybuilding competitions. But then I was driven so much by kind of aesthetics. And then you're getting compared to people on stage as well, you know, some of the best physiques on the planet, because I, you know, competed at a really high level. And I then switched my mindset. It was a process. I'm sure a lot mm -hmm. of people can work with this. I, I know you can. You know, where you kind of have that switch where you, you focus more on health, essentially. You start paying more attention to gut health, to how you feel, energy levels, to, you know, your mood, mental clarity, mental health, performance in the gym, paying more attention to that. And just taking the focus away from, you know, the aesthetics was a massive transition for me. And that's when I really started reinventing myself and changing the way I was thinking about things, improving my relationship with myself uh, and also my relationship with food. Uh, after competing, which was, I stopped around about, well, I did my last show. I actually did one show in Australia, but uh, I started, you know, really overcoming some of the struggles that I had from bodybuilding uh, and being focused too much on, on body when I was in my late 20s, about kind of seven, seven or eight years ago. And that was a big kind of turning point for me. What, what type of things do people uh, uh, suffer from in that bodybuilding world that, or the, some of the things that you were suffering from that sort of, pushed you to make the changes? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So for me, I just, just to cut a long story short, I just jumped on stage on a whim, right? I was already in good shape and people were just saying to me in the gym, I used to PT him, you should do it, Mark. You know, you're already in great shape. It was the, it was the men's physique category. So just for the audience, it's board shorts. I started off doing the one with long board shorts. It's almost like they started off with this kind of men's health cover look, 
right? So it's like athletic, rip, or whatever. So I just jump on stage on a whim, not really knowing what I was doing at that point. Although I'd been training people for about six, seven years at that point, you know, I knew the fundamentals of nutrition, but I just kind of winged it, jumped on stage. Mm-hmm. And then I came second. I ended up getting into the British finals. So then I thought, oh, I might as well do this. And then that's when I got kind of sucked in to that wall. But some of the biggest issues that I saw, and I say this all the time, I said this on Ovadia's podcast, I saw more disorders when it comes to eating, poor relationship with food, poor relationships in general, and body image issues in that wall, Rob, right, than I've seen in the hundreds of clients that I've coached over the last 15 years, in that short period there over a few years. So... I think it's really important. We do judge a book by its cover naturally. You know, we look at someone in shape and we just automatically assume we can't help it, right? That person's got their, their, their shit together, so to speak. Sorry, I hope I can, uh, can I use the odd swear word oh, here? Please, please. We're, 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 we're for, for uh, speak the words. <laughs> All good. So long story short, you know, when you look at people online or whatever, bodybuilders, and you see all this, you know, all these physiques, I've seen what happens behind the scenes and I have my own struggles with like binge eating and stuff like that as well, which, you know, we can go into if you'd like, well, I'm an open book. Well, I think one of the, the, you know, we see people's bodies and we, we judge them, as you said, the, 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 the cover of the book. And so we have a lot of all the, we all have emotional problems. And then the, we have the physical problems that even though you might look good, I mean, I've got this bursitis going on right now. I've had, tendonitis and you know i've had back problems over the years depending on on what the activity is or isn't and and so in that moment of looking good what did it take to get there and then what are all the 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 demons and all the things that are going on within our body in order to try to you know we go through the pain and then to learn a new process to get to someplace else 100 percent, yeah and everything comes at a price right rob so when you're trying to get in shape physically and you're so focused on that as well yeah. Then it becomes a bit, it can become a bit of an obsession. And I always say to people, you always end up disappointed when you're really focused on the body so much. It's never ended. You could take it from me because people were looking at me like, oh my God. And I was like, well, my legs are out of proportion, you know? <laughs> so I was disappointed because I was so focused on it. But yeah, it comes at a price. And just what you said then, Rob, about health as well and really paying attention to that, it gets to a point where you have to focus on that, right? Because it's not sustainable. It's good to have a goal, right? And let's be honest, Rob. Most people want to improve the way their body looks, yeah. which is realistic, right? Pretty much most people listening, but that can't be the main focus. And we do look at others in order to sort of judge ourselves in order to say, hey, I want to look like that, or I want to think like that, or I want to succeed like that. How would you approach a client who comes to you in, in what are they usually asking for in, in, in your, your uh, help? Yeah, so the type of person that I work with is generally someone who's already at a pretty good level in terms of strength training. So they've got a decent amount of experience with lifting weights, normally a few years. Minimum requirement for me is at least six months, right? Because it is an online program. And they normally come to me and they're just stuck. So they've either they want to lose weight, you know, they've struggled with what over 90% of people struggle with. And it's not weight loss that's the problem, right? It's actually keeping the weight off. So they've struggled with yo-yo dieting or, you know, losing weight and gaining their back. That's the first kind of person. The second kind of person is just someone who's at a good level with their, with their body and their training, but they really want to add that smart piece in. So they're doing okay, but they plateaued and they've got these psychological barriers as well with perhaps nutrition and they, they just overwhelmed and a little bit confused, right? Because there's so much information out there, which I understand. So it's adding in the smart piece as well. But what I say to people when they come to me and they want to lose a bit of weight, for example, or regardless, right? I always want to know, Rob, the, 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 the cliche thing, why is it important to you, right? You've got to know your real reason to change. And I always question people on this because, you know, if you want to lose a bit of weight, that's not, you know, I want to lose, let's say 20 pounds, right? Someone comes to me, I want to lose 20 pounds. First thing is, right, do you want to lose the weight or do you want to lose the weight and keep it off? Because that's a different conversation, right? <laughs> and we can go there. But I want to know why it's important to them. Because if you just want to lose 20 pounds and you think that's going to be enough to keep you going, you know, when things get tough and things get difficult, you've got another thing coming. And again, the metabolism is very complex as well. And hopefully we'll touch on this in terms of my methods. But I asked them why it's important to them, uh, what would happen if they continued living like they are. And I just help them get that awareness in terms of their real reason to change. And that is absolutely paramount. So it's like, okay, you you want to lose 20 pounds. Let's just go a bit deeper on that. You know, why is that important to you? 
So I like to I make sure I really understand my prospects on a deep level. Oh, well, I just want to improve my confidence. Okay, so what does that look like to you, being more confident? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I haven't really been showing up my best for my family and I'm getting into my own head. I'm self-conscious when I'm with my family, with my partner. It's a fact. You know, it's impacting our relationship potentially. So there's, there's normally, not always, but there's normally some underlying pain there, which people are not really aware of because they kind of sweep it under the carpet. You know what it's like, you know, some people come to me and they're amazed by the fact that they've just avoided looking in the mirror. You know, they've, this is some people, like the most people I work with, like I say, they're at a decent level, but some people have just avoided the difficult thing of taking ownership for, right, I need to get my, I need to get my shit together, right? And they've just avoided looking in the mirror of their body and they've just swept it under the cup for so long. And then when you unpack and they go, wow, I really need to change because the cost of not taking action for a lot of people, they realize is way more expensive than just investing in themselves and, and taking action and essentially reinventing themselves. Because you know yourself, Rob, if it was just as simple as you know, training, nutrition, you know, calories, whatever, yes. everyone would be walking around with six pack abs, right? We all know it's the behavior change. It's making changes to their lifestyle that they can stick to permanent changes, which people don't, it blows my mind that people don't look at that. They look at, so, and so people say this to me, Rob, as well, without going off on too much of a tangent, let me just get this weight off and we'll figure out the rest afterwards. I can't tell you how many times I get that. And it's like, okay, it doesn't work like that. You can't just have this number in your head, expect to lose the weight, and then just, okay, everything's great now. You've got to have a method for that sustainability. Well, maybe you could touch on that method that, that you're sort of helping people find, uh, which I think is deep within everyone, but so commonly we, we don't see it within ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. And regardless of whether it's weight loss or people just wanted to build muscle and just take their physique and – you know, their behaviors with food, their knowledge on nutrition, whatever that is to the next level. The approach is kind of similar, right? It's like, right, what can we do that you can stick to first and foremost? Yeah. So if we go through the big rocks, I always say the big rocks, right? Training, sleep, nutrition. We could talk about movement as well being one of those big rocks, of course. But, right, let's have a look at what you're doing with your nutrition, for example, right? And, you know, a lot of people are already doing quite well that come to me, but I'd say at least 50% of them they're just not having an optimal, optimal amount of protein, right? So the usual thing, right, Rob, is the first thing that always comes to mind because so much changes for the better, right? When you mm -hmm. don't just increase, I'm not just talking about increasing protein and eating protein bars and processed foods. I'm talking about from whole meat, right? When you start increasing protein and then obviously when you start getting most of the nutrients you need through, you know, an animal-based approach or whatever, generally people start to level up, right? But it's meeting them where they're at, Rob, as well because, you've got to set goals which are unrealistic. Some people might be grossly under eating protein. They might be having, let's just say they're having 50 grams of protein a day. I'm not going to say, okay, we're going to go to 150 grams of protein because that just is not going to be sustainable to three times the amount of protein overnight and keep that going forever. So I meet them where they're at and I'll just include, for example, a simple thing with protein is just for breakfast. A lot of people, they kind of don't have enough for breakfast and they're not they're not used to having things like meat for breakfast and meat and eggs and those kind of things. And when they start doing that, it's so funny, Rob, a lot of things change. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's a simple thing with nutrition that came to mind. Anyway. Simplicity. And, and when you talk about nutrition, and and obviously we're mostly in the, the carnivore uh, arena, there's, you know, I still think keto is, is has some functions and maybe again, it's what meet people where they're at. Um, how have been, how have you focused on on the nutrition side, either in the keto world, the carnivore world, and how do people um, take that? Yeah, it's a great question because a lot of people have been coming to me now from the carnivore side. And that's always interesting because they come to me and they've been they want to get to the next level with their physique and their results for the work they're already putting in. To be fair, a lot of the people that come from that space, they're already really disciplined, which is great. The kind of person I like to work with really is someone who's already at a good level, like I say, and they want to kind of unlock the true potential. They come to me and it's like, okay, let's dial things in now. Let's have a look at what you're doing. And sometimes they just simply need to have a proper training program because there's actually a lot of nuance to it when it comes to a personalized specific program, which is going to maximize results for the time you're spending in the gym. There's that. And then there's fine tuning things there, right? So they may have been eating a certain way with Carnival, for example, uh, for a period of time. But it might have just simply been under eating as well, where they've been in that mindset of they might have had great success. A lot of people come to me, by the way, about great success. Talk about sustainable weight loss with carnivore. But then they want to get to the next level. And then it's like, okay, well, you know, you're not really consuming enough calories. Now you're being overly restrictive. So how about we kind of increase? Again, it could be something simple like eating a few extra eggs, having some more meat, 
having a bit more variety there, whether that's uh, organ meat, throwing in some whatever, like a little bit of bone broth, whatever, for those people. But then for the average person who comes to me, it is a case of meeting them where they're at. They might not eat much meat in general, right? They might be, they say, and that's another thing, Rob, as well, a lot of people think they're eating high protein that come to me. And it's like, when you look at what they're eating, you're like, no, you know, having some cheese and nuts and a protein shake or whatever, that's not high protein, you know? So we've got to start getting more of those more nutrient dense foods in now, like meat and, more, and whatever. But there's other bit that obviously sleep is going to be number one as well. That's something we always address straight away because that's the foundation, right, Rob? Well, I'm wondering how much of a, a, the combination of, of uh, lack of sleep or, or maybe too much sleep in some cases it may be, um, and, and that in the mindset, uh, that because people are living with a lot of stress and struggles and how do you, how do you sort of help clean, you know, because you want to get in the gym, you want to do the work, uh, but then you got to take the rest of the, the information you're sharing on the road because people aren't in the gym all the time. And uh, how do you kind of help direct them in the, into the de-stressing and the sleep side? And that's exactly what it is, Rob. Sleep and stress are the two. I talked about the big rocks being training, nutrition, sleep, movement. However, the foundation of all that is going to be sleep and stress. Because if one of those is out of whack, even one night of sleep deprivation, right? If we talk about calorie consumption, you're likely to eat a lot more, right? Because the impact on hormones such as leptin can decrease drastically after one night's poor sleep. Leptin is the satiety hormone. Ghrelin, the hunger hormone, can spike up by up to like 30, 40% even after one night poor sleep. And, you know, research shows people eat like 40% more or something when they're sleep deprived. So that needs to be number one. So I always get people to focus on having discipline with sleep. And the funny thing is, it's actually the hardest thing. Nutrition, very, very challenging. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of consistency, it was the last one for me, me to dial in, Rob, to be honest. But I get people to have some sort of routine with their sleep. I don't like to, you don't want to add too much in that's going to overwhelm people. But simple stuff like avoiding blue light at least 60 to 90 minutes before bedtime mm. and having a ritual for an hour or two before bed. Like I get them to live by candlelight, avoid the blue lights, maybe invest in some uh, nighttime blue light blockers and just have a routine. You listen to a podcast by all means, but don't look at those screens, you know? So getting some type of bedtime ritual, what tends to naturally happen then Rob is they tend to wake up at more of a regular time when you dial in that sleep routine generally so just by doing that gives a bit more rhythm. And we all know, well, most of us know regularity is one of the most important things to sleep. But stress, this is a big one, right? And mm -hmm. I always say to people when I take them on, look, they're already busy. A lot of these people are high performers, successful entrepreneurs, you know, high up in the corporate world. It's like, we're going to complement your lifestyle now and not complicate things, right? Yeah. So we're going to add in one thing. And how can we do this in a way where it's not going to be overloading, right? Overloading stress and adding fuel to the fire. So having techniques in place for people to manage stress. And I always say, you need to know and have practices in place to be able to change your state. I'm really, really big on this because when you get into a state of overwhelm or when you get into a state of whatever it, whatever it is, like stress, anxiety, work and stuff like that, you've got to have methods in place that can snap you out of that because obviously that's going to dictate stress and emotions is going to dictate a lot of the times, you know, the decisions you make with food as well, a lot of the times, right? So having, so for example, whether that's, you know, go, simply going for a walk, we use like band sessions as well. For Some clients are lucky enough to work from home. Some of them do it in the office, right? Where they get the rubber bands out, resistance bands, and they'll just do a quick pump up just to change their state. And that speeds the metabolism up as well, which we can touch on. You know, for me, it's a cold shower. So that's the big thing I, I have people focus on is, is, is having methods in place, simple methods that you can change your state when you get into those, into those overwhelmed or stressed states, you know? Well, it's interesting because I know for my sleep uh, 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 habit, it's I go to bed at nine, I wake up at three. I often take one or two naps a day, 10 minutes. And and it's just, it's, it's that routine. The early morning is the best time of day. I get the most done. Um, and I, I think we don't nap enough personally. I think napping is something that we need to get back to. It resets the synapse um, the mindset. Uh, most people take a, um, they, 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 they either go, they go exercise too much or, but they go for a coffee break or some other break where they need to, to chill it down, cool it down and calm it down in order to get there. Uh, habits. Tell us a little bit about your recommended exercise habits uh, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. How do you usually sort of direct your clients? So the cornerstone, Rob, should always be strength training when it comes to everything health-related, essentially. 
heart health, okay. longevity, strength being one of the most key indicators. That and VO2 max, in other words, your fitness levels for longevity and health, but also for metabolism as well. Now, research is still struggling to keep up with the strength benefits, the benefits that you get. Because metabolism, as you know, Rob, next to the human brain, is the most complex thing ever. So they're still figuring it out. But strength training needs to be the cornerstone. Even if people haven't got access to a gym. I do have like a small amount of clients who don't. You don't, for the audience listening, if you've never lifted weights before, you can do this with your own body weight. And yeah. maybe bring in some, some, some rubber bands. But having some form of consistent strength training is key. That should be the cornerstone. And it depends on what level the person is at. The answer is always it depends. But if it's someone for the average person training, you know, two to three times a week, as long as you're following ideally a proper program and it's, it's, you know, you're doing it properly, it's appropriate strength training. And when I say appropriate as well, Rob, what I do mean is you're not adding fuel to the fire, like I said earlier, because you can add in more training and it can be too much. It's overload. And that's going to have a negative effect on, on, on your health. So strength training should be the cornerstone. I always talk about, you know, movement as well. Movement being medicine, of course. You know, regular movement, ideally. Not sitting down for longer than an hour or two. There's a reason why they say yeah. sitting and you smoking, right? There's a reason for that. But also for mental health, emotional health, that's my favorite way to kind of change my state and get my mind right. And in terms of other forms of exercise, obviously with cardio, that's another conversation for longevity and health. And being fit is really important. We can't deny that. But when it comes to metabolism and people improving their metabolic health and physique, which is what a lot of people want, it can actually be a bit counterproductive doing too much cardio because it sounds like an opposite signal, which we could talk on. That doesn't mean to stop doing it. You need to Im implement it, but integrate that in a way where it's aligned with your goals. A lot of people want to get more metabolically healthy, which we, we can touch on. Um, but yeah, with, with strength training, um, to be more specific with that, you need to be lifting heavy weights, ideally getting to a point where you're challenging yourself with your strength and you're doing maybe a lower rep range at some point where you're doing perhaps, you know, anywhere between two to six reps, but um, making sure that you're, you're periodiz periodizing your training as well. So like with my clients, for example, Rob, every say anywhere between three to five weeks will change the stimulus depending on the person. So they'll go from doing maybe heavy lifting phase to, a slow tempo phase where they're doing more than eight to 10 rep range, slow time under tension reps, which it's is still heavy. Oh, sorry. It's still heavy. It's still, still quite heavy. heavy. It's still quite heavy, but yeah, that's a good question because it's all about the tension you apply to the muscles in that rep range, as you'll know yourself. So it's more a case of my muscle connection. How heavy can you make the weight? That's a really good point. I always say to my clients on this particular phase, it's all about how heavy you can make the weight by slowing down the reps. And a lot of people that's underrated, Rob. That's another conversation. The slow tempo stuff's underrated. Yeah, Fred Hahn's uh, slow burn is basically uh, go slow and, uh, and until you can't do it anymore, and which I think is a kind of an interesting one. Yeah, it's a failure pretty much, right? Right, right. Mi minimal equipment that people need? Yeah, minimal for, equipment. For, yeah, for sure. uh, their body and the floor? Exactly. Yeah, if, if someone hasn't done any strength training or they're a beginner, definitely. Body weight, even without anything else, the body on the floor, 100%. You know, even if you if you don't train or do strength, try and do, try doing 10 squats, right, to start there, right? If you don't yep. squat, do 10 squats. You'll probably feel that the next day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, well, I, my, 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 I, I do pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, but the most important exercise is get up. And so it's yep. it's sort of get up off the chair, get up out of bed or off the couch and and, and begin to move and as you move the blood flow the the microvascular uh, 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 pools open up and the beds open up and the oxygen begins to get your metabolism going a little bit better than and because I think that sleeping and resting is a little bit of a reduction in your metabolic rate which is kind of the natural thing but then it's got to get get moving again uh, which I think is very important I'm glad you said that, getting up off the ground. Yeah, just a body weight Turkish get-up. But for a lot of people, it might be a bit too technical, but simply getting up off the ground. Lie down on their back and sit up and get off the ground and do a few reps. <laughs> yeah. uh, the gym versus the home. Uh, what, what's your thoughts about that? I mean, now, you know, so much over the last several years, you know, we've been locked down and at home, and many of our, our podcasting has increased because we're all at home. But uh, how important it is to get to a gym – or, or or to the the the, the fitness um, guides like yourself that are going to help motivate us personally in in person with others. 
Yeah, so you mean like a one-to-one coach, like face-to-face? Well, well, if not one-to-one, but just being there with other human beings. Because we're, 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 we're humans that are meant to be not just uh, podcasting, although the beauty of the brain is that it sees you from, from Australia and me from upstate New York in the U.S. is, is like we're, we're really there with everyone. That's what I'm loving about this podcasting, the communication we're able to do with these methods that is really social media has helped tremendously the benefits of just getting out and going to the gym, being around other people. What are your I'm thoughts? I'm so glad you said that because I had this chat with friends the other day. And when the whole COVID thing happened, I bought loads of equipment and I was training at home and I was really enjoying it. Really getting into it. But now I go to the gym and because I'm the same as you, well, I'm not really everything I do is online. Right. So I do these podcasts and it's amazing. Just like you say, but having those interactions, you just being around other humans is essential yeah. for your health. So I went to the gym this morning and I do think be, making an effort to do that if you can, if you, especially because most of us are sat down in front of a screen all day. So if you can get and be around other people. And what I love about the gym is like most people, everyone there is trying to improve themselves. So generally you're around people who are trying to improve themselves and just being around that is great. But having that energy as well. Yeah, that's my thing now. To be honest, I sold my gym equipment. I went back to the gym because I always feel better when I go. So I do think whatever you do, being around other people is key. Um, but whatever kind of fits into your lifestyle, because of some people, they're so busy, it's more productive for them to just do it at home because there's a lot less time, you know, people with kids or whatever. I have some clients, like 60 hours a week, one client with three kids, and it's like he just blasts it at home. That's his, that's really is what he could go to the gym, but that's his only option at the moment. So he does it and gets it done, and it works for him. So you've got to look at what's going to keep you consistent, Robin. I think that's the number one thing as well, that people always look at the best program and what's the optimal way Forget about optimal. If you're not consistent, right, you can forget about it because I always say that probably the worst program in the world done consistently is going to get better results than, you know, the, a world-class program <laughs> done inconsistently. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any, any particular um, people that have inspired you in your journey uh, or any particular books that uh, you find helpful uh, in either the, the mental or the physical or the nutritional side of things? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few, actually. So I would say in terms of inspiration, a, a bit, I'll, I'll shout them out. A big inspiration for me, I mentioned, I think I mentioned, what, 2014, I started listening to podcasts, and there was, a, there was one called Mind Pump. I'm not sure if you've heard of Mind Pump. No, I haven't. Yeah. Mind oh, they're, Pump. they're like the number one health and fitness podcast now. Anyway, I started listening to them uh, back in the day, and they helped me so much because they, uh, they've been through a lot that I've been through as well. They were coaches face-to-face for probably a couple of decades. And it was all stuff that I kind of already knew when it comes to fasting, in terms of not having to having to eat pro, like the bodybuilding mindset of eating every couple of hours, six times a day, which is, is essentially a load of BS. So all those things are kind of new, but then those guys kind of simplified it and helped me mm-hmm. implement it and go, oh, okay, they've been doing that. So I'm going to implement that. And just the way they kind of communicate things and even methods with like training and stuff like that, They've taught me a lot. So shout out to them because, you know, they, they, they taught me a lot. In terms of books, there's, there's so many uh, inspirational books that I've read. I would have to say, um, you know, like some of Ryan Holiday's books I like. I'm not sure. If yep. The, yep. 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 Ryan Holiday, love. Yeah. Yeah. So The book, Obstacle uh, is the Way was the first one I think I, I read from him. And, uh, but, you know, he's in, in has a lot of the uh, Stoics work, uh, which is really great. The Marcus Aurelius and, and Nepotitis. And so, Cool. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Obstacle is Away is one of my favorites for sure. Uh, there's so many books that I read though now, so you throw me off guard. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, well, that's the beauty of it. I mean, I, I, I always go back to The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And uh, yeah, I, I really, I that, yeah. oh, it's, it's, it's a great one. And, and Man's Search for Meaning. Man's so Search for Meaning. Uh, that's Victor. exactly what I was going to say next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, because there's always, uh, there's, we don't talk enough. I mean, it's always about meat and, and, and muscles. But the mind part of it, where like mind pump and and where there's so much out there that inspires us by listening to the stories, mm. uh, either read them directly or listen to them. And I love to listen to podcasts and, and, and audio books. And and uh, I'll sometimes just look for, especially I love YouTube and listening to someone like yourself on my drive home, just put it aside and just listen. And, you know, you're getting so much. Uh, in this globe to help us on the journey. Uh, so that mindset is something that 
that I, I sense in a lot of your work that you really talk a lot about. You got to have the, the, the mental change in order to yeah. get to the physical change. Dr. Rob Kiltz, another beautiful, spectacular day. And I just want to send thanks to all of those for watching the newest episode of Carnivore Conversations. Be sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, and other streaming platforms to gain access to the full one hour episode. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more to come. God bless.